Welcome back to this video on variable acceleration in mechanics, unit two, mechanics two. Um, in this video, we're going to look at how we go about using integration. So this is when we're moving from acceleration to velocity to displacement. So essentially the reverse of what we looked at in the last video. And essentially, if I have an acceleration and if I integrate it, that would give me a velocity. And if I had a velocity and I integrated that, then I would have a displacement. Okay, probably easier to look at this as a kind of up and down process of what you're doing between differentiating and integrating. So if we think of it this way, we've got a displacement, a velocity and our acceleration. And if we move down, so we go from displacement to velocity, we are differentiated, velocity to acceleration, differentiating, and moving up, we'd be integrating. So acceleration, integrate that, we get velocity, integrate that, we get displacement. And all this is done in terms of like, or with respect to T, to time. Okay, so if you think of this little diagram here this is how you're going to remember where to go you know how you do it so differentiating when we go in this way integrating going in the other direction okay hopefully that will help you guys out a little bit now we're not going to look at anything too difficult in this video we'll just do a few questions as always with the integration I'll give you a few to try and then of course at the end i'll go through the answers okay so stay tuned for the first example okay now in this first example we can see that a particle is moving along the x-axis at time t equals zero the particle is at a point where x equals eight so this x equals eight is basically the same as your s your displacement and a time t equals zero so this is what's going to enable us to find our constant um after we've integrated so you'll always see this within a question somewhere a little bit of information often it is at the time t equals zero or at the start you know um, there's a few different ways that it can sometimes be implied but you'll always be looking for that so that you can find your constant now the particle so where were we sorry the velocity of the particle at time t seconds is so this is our, just our basic expression uh, so we know that v equals 4t minus 3t squared that's what we're given this is obviously for part a we need to find an expression for the displacement so obviously this is s but since it's moving along the x-axis and we're given x equals 8 you could just use x instead of s it doesn't really make any difference and all we need to do is just keep in our minds this little diagram we'll just shrink it in there that's what we need to kind of keep in our minds so to get the displacement i need to take my velocity and i need to integrate it so that's what i'm going to do so my displacement my s or my x this is going to be the integration or the integral of the velocity with respect to time so all we are now doing is integrating this 4t minus 3t squared it's a straightforward integration nothing difficult about this so 4t squared over 2 minus 3t cubed over 3 plus c and obviously i can simplify this so that leaves me with 2t squared minus t cubed plus c and that is an expression for my displacement However, like I said at the beginning, we're given an extra bit of information that enables us to find our value for that constant. So when t equals 0, x or s equals 8. So at s equals 8, 
in fact let's just make it in terms of x just to make it uh, a little bit nicer here so let's call this x as we come down so at x equals 8 t is 0 so 8 equals so we've basically got 0 minus 0 plus c so c is 8 therefore x equals 2t squared minus t cubed plus 8 and that's our expression for the displacement so that's part a done nice and easy and part b quite standard in this type of question is just using what you've just calculated or what you've worked out so we know that x equals 2t squared minus t cubed plus 8 and we need to find x when t equals 10. So it's just a simple substitution. And calculation. And the value for this is minus 792. Might have been better if I'd uh, planned this question out a little bit better, I suppose. But it's still valid it just means that it's gone in one direction in the positive direction and then it started going in the opposite direction and it's gone 792 meters past the origin in the other direction so you know you think yeah i'm using the word origin maybe yeah the origin point rather rather than the start point I suppose would be uh you know more applicable but yeah that's the origin say oh but its start point was obviously at eight and then it's ended up in this direction at minus seven nine two so that's all that's kind of happened there but there's nothing to worry about but hopefully it makes sense now i'll do another question i'm going to do one with a couple of integrations in it now here we've got quite an interesting past exam question this one is going to involve two integrations and I've seen these different ways this one's a little bit different I haven't seen it this way very often so this one if we look in the question we've got acceleration and we basically need to get to displacement so if we think again of our little diagram starting here with where are we acceleration and we need to get to displacement now i have seen this a few times where here it would say when t equals something the velocity is this which will enable us to find the constant after we first integrate and then it gives us a, a second part for the displacement so then we can find that constant at the end in this case however though it's given us two displacements okay so you've got your acceleration then we've got displacement one and displacement two so this one a little bit different but let's get started so the first thing we want to do is find the velocity and the velocity is going to be us integrating this acceleration so that is us integrating our 6t plus 2 and when I integrate this I'm going to get 6t squared over 2 plus 2t plus c and of course I can simplify this so I get 3t squared plus 2t plus c now like I said just now often then we're given a set of values so we can find that c in this particular question we don't 90% of the time this type of question does give us that so what do we need to do next well we need to get to displacement so our displacement is us integrating our velocity so you just want to keep this in mind all the time okay remembering keep them in order 
just remember SVA and then just remember then differentiate down integrate up if you can do that you know that's half the battle for you so back to the question we are integrating so 3t squared plus 2t plus c now <clears throat> c is a constant so just treat it how you would if it was a number like if it was 5 or 8 or whatever just a number so integrating this we get 3t cubed over 3 plus 2t squared over 2 plus cx plus d so i'm just adding in a second constant that i'm calling d let's do my simplifying oh, that's nice so t cubed plus t squared plus cx plus d and that is our displacement now we need to look at what we've got so we've got t equals 2 s is 10 so t equals 2s is 10 and t equals 3s is 38 t equals 3s is 38 so these are our values so let's take this formula and plug them in we've basically got two unknowns c and d and we can create two equations so it's just simultaneous equations so 10 equals 2 cubed plus 2 squared plus 2c plus d. And we'll simplify that in a second. But the other one is 38 equals 3 cubed plus 3 squared plus 3c plus d. So all I want to do is just a little bit of simplifying. So... 10 equals 12 plus 2c plus d it makes sense just to get my constants on one side um i would just put the minus 2 2c plus d it's the kind of form that you're used to seeing a, a you know an x term a y term equaling a constant it also enables you to use the simultaneous function in your calculator so that you can check your answer and I'll do the same on the other side. And then there's lots of ways in which you can do these. You can rearrange one and make it d equal, substitute it into the other one. That's one way, nice and easy to do that. Um, you can put them together simultaneously and eliminate. It's totally up to you. So I'm just going to eliminate. I'm just going to do two, equation two, take away equation one. So I've got like this in terms of my setup and when I take them away 2 minus minus 2 is 4 3c minus 2c is 1c and d minus d is 0 so that gives me c equals 4 and let's sub this in to equation let's substitute it into equation 2 so that gives me 2 equals three dots of four plus d three dots of four is 12 so d is going to be equal to minus 10. and now i can substitute these values into both my v and my s also just really noticed a really stupid and silly mistake i've written down an x when my integrations obviously that should actually be a t um i was going to fully edit the video but i just thought it's it's nice to see that you know everyone makes these mistakes but it is important that you check back over your work okay if i hadn't checked back over it then one you guys watching are probably confused or would be you probably were at the time and hopefully now you're you're not confused but two, you know, it can penalise you in, in terms of your marks in an exam. So do take the time to look back over your work. Now we've got our two expressions. We can go ahead and finish off part A and also answer part B. So 
So part A is the displacement when t equals 4. So we've got our formula. I'm just rewriting it out again. We want to substitute t equals 4 in. So 4 cubed plus 4 squared plus 4 lots of 4 minus 10. And that leaves me 86 meters. Part B is using the velocity. So we've already worked out the formula there. And of course we substitute in T equals 4N again. Okay, so that will give us 60. And of course this is meters per second. Hopefully this example has shown you that one, it's very easy to make just little mistakes in there that may or may not cost you marks in an exam. And two, that skills like uh, solving simultaneous equations and not that it's in this one, but factorizing quadratics or solving quadratics. These are skills that are really important right throughout your A-level maths. They come up time and time again so you need to be good at those okay obviously your calculator will do them so you do have that as your backup but these are skills that you should have these are things that you should make sure you are competent in okay i think that's enough for the examples i'm going to give you a couple of questions to have a go at and i'll go through them at the end of the video just before I do, um, a couple of people have said that they found it difficult sometimes with the level of volume of my voice. It is a little bit uh, hard where I'm trying to make these videos at the moment, but I'm trying to speak a little bit louder. Let me know in the comments if it is any better or not. I will try to continue to make kind of improvements there. And of course, if you're new to my videos or even if you've been here a while but haven't subscribed, please just consider hitting that subscribe button and just uh, helping me out a little bit. Thank you.